Hey guys, it's TTL back with another rush kit for you. Now, I have been personally sent an awful lot of boards for the Z270 KV Lake launch and I just can't get round to reviewing all of them. I think there's 14 or 15 motherboards that I've got. Uh, now I can't do them all for the third, so I am doing some uh, rush kit so that we can actually have a look at the products so that you can get an idea for them. And then I will give them full reviews later on the OC3D uh, website and OC3D TV. So this video is gonna be about the uh, Z270i Gaming Pro Carbon AC. Now the AC is basically because it's got wireless. Gaming Pro Carbon is what they call on a lot of their boards and the I stands for ITX because it is an ITX board and if I end up saying 170 in any of the rest of this video because I've done on a few others you know what I mean it's just a bit confusing having the numbers so similar at the moment so they say it's VR ready and they are going to be doing some uh, specific VR not dedicated ports but kind of optimized VR ports Mystic Light this is to do with RGB we'll talk about that when we get inside around the back M.2, we can talk about that, that's all lovely, lovely. Mystic Light up here again. Gaming LAN and LAN Protect, it's got an anti-surge on the LAN, although I've never had a surge come through. Uh, but yeah, I suppose there's always the option, you know, if you're a telephone cable or something gets hit by lightning, it could filter its way through. Audio boost, and they're saying that's done with a crystal sound. One thing to remember is that the uh, boards do support the old, um, CPU, so the 6700K, 6000 series basically, 6th gen, and the new 7th gen stuff. So, when we bust the box open, first thing is the motherboard, but we'll move that to one side. And then the uh, first thing that we um, get met with are some SATA cables. We've got some little tags so that you can uh, wrap these round your SATA cables, or any other cables for that matter, so you can identify them. Then here we have uh, an extension cable for the RGB. Again, this is kind of the RGB thing that I said we would talk about when we get to the board itself. We've got a driver CD. Oh, there's two driver CDs. LAN, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Thunderbolt drivers and utilities, drivers and utilities. And then, yeah, maybe they've sent two by mistake where it's uh, like a really early sample. And then we've got a really itty bitty manual. That's a proper tiny manual compared to normal couple of uh, antennas there because it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and then the uh, back plate. So kind of the usual suspect sort of stuff that you would expect to go in there. We'll move that that way, move this this way and we will pop the old girl out so that we can have a proper look. So first thing that strikes me is here. We've got a vertical uh, Wi-Fi card, but it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The button on the bottom is actually to clear your uh, BIOS. Audio here with gold-plated connectors. Does look kind of nice. This is your USB 3.1, and you've got a C and an A. These are USB 3, Intel Internet. I believe it was Intel Internet. I don't want to say Intel when I've seen so many other ones with killers. So we'll go and have a look, but I'm pretty sure it's Intel Ethernet LAN. Yeah, Intel i219v gigabit LAN. So yes, it's Intel gigabit ethernet, ha. Right, uh, so then we got HDMI, display port, two USB 2s and then a PS2. And then when we have a look at the board itself, we can, we'll start up here and it's, you've got the eight pin, but it's turned round. Uh, but I suppose that's kind of to save room. On this side, we have three PWM fan headers. And I'm trying to see the writing for it. I think that is the CPU one. That is system fan one, and this is system fan two. I'm not seeing the writing on the board for this one. You can see, look, system fan two, system fan one is hidden underneath there. I can't see the writing for CPU. There it is, look, CPU fan one. So that's your CPU fan. They're all down this side. This is actually a USB, which is kind of up in the middle of nowhere, but if you do end up wanting to use this, a little um, hint for you, that if you do, run it down the side here and underneath the um, graphics card. So take your graphics card out, run it down here and around if you need to, but I suppose if you run an ITX case, you might not get much choice, but you get where I'm trying to go from it. Then you've got USB 3 here. You've got one, two, three, four total SATAs. They are vertical. Shame these ones weren't right angles. But anyway, this is your front panel header here. And then 
Easy debug LED. I'm not sure whether they're up the side here or not because it's quite difficult to tell at the moment. But you've got the, the nice covers on the SATA ports, connectors, SATAs, RAM ports. You can see I've been talking about this stuff far too much over the last couple of days, trying to get all this stuff done. You've got a nice bit of carbon over the top of the 270 chipset cover, although it is kind of small, but I've not really had any heat problems with any of the 270 boards yet. When we move up to the top, you can see that we've got five chokes in total. So five phases on it. And you've got the caps hidden around the back there. MOSFETs will be underneath that. You'll notice though, no M.2. And that's because it's round here. You have to put it round the back. So it's one of those ones where, yes, if you did have issues with your drive and you couldn't get access to it from the back, you would have to uh, take it out. One of the things I could say though is, um, depending on your case alignment, if you want a project, you might want to extend your CPU cutout or something to get down to it. So that could make a nice project for you to do. You've only got a screw here and a screw here, so it would be easy to have been able to cut it out so that you could get access to it. Um, and like I said, you're gonna have your CPU mount anyway. So it is an option, do you know what I mean? Maybe something you want to do wouldn't take long with a Dremel. Uh, good things to point out is it's quite monochrome, so it should fit with any um, build. You've got the RGB option as well, although I've not been able to find the RGB header. Although they are on here. I think it might be that one over here. It's quite difficult when LED, uh, JLED, yeah, I think that one's the LED. And then that'll be why you get an extension and that'll be so that you can put it off somewhere. But it will mean that you can put um, lights in your case should you want to. If you end up getting one of the MSI graphics cards with the RGB, I'm hoping that they're going to bring the RGB in a little bit better on the graphics cards with the, the kind of the next generation of stuff that'll be coming out in 2017. So it ties in a little bit better. But the fact that it's black, it's small, you've got some nice stainless bits on it, it already looks good. Pick your colour for your, um, your theme with your rig and it could look epic. I'll be looking forward to seeing how it performs and more importantly how it overclocks as well. But we're not going to find that out for another couple of weeks yet because of just the sheer amount of boards that we've got gone through. If you want to have a look at the reviews that are already live you can go to the OC3D website. But for now at least don't forget to check out the rest of the videos on Rushkit and chuck us a subscribe if you like the quick and short to the point skim over videos. And yes, I did say rush kit because we have rushed it. But this is Bean Tiny Tom Logan, out.